say it's in the Bible, where it says, let this mind be in you. The same that was in Christ Jesus. So, Brother Deborah, of course, his leader and his teacher was the Honorable and is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And what, what type of mind does he have? I'm not talking about the mind that the press, you know, that the haters of our liberation and salvation, not what they have to say about it. Uh, what what is his mind like? And then if we give, get an insight on his mind, that is the mind. Hey, beautiful. You've got a text message. Trying to uh, give to each and every one of us who came by his side. Hey, beautiful. You've got a text message. Well, you have to look at the mind of those messengers and prophets that God had sent before you and me, the mind of Moses, the mind of Jesus, the mind of Muhammad. So there's a question in the book called Closing the Gap that reminds me of Brother Deborah. And I would like to give the question and then the and then the answer and then we'll go home. So Brother Jabril asked Minister Farrakhan about, you said that there was no advancement without sacrifice, and that the advancement of, human, of humanity toward the ultimate objective of God requires on the part of some or many or all to one degree or another pain bloodshed, and even the loss of life. Please comment, Brother Minister. There is no advancement without the sacrifice of life, blood, and pain. Those human beings whom God has chosen to advance us in whatever discipline that is must first have the quality to endure suffering, to endure insult, such persons must be able to endure criticism made by judgmental persons who are comfortable where they are and are challenged by where this human being is trying to lead us. There is no advancement in any field without tremendous sacrifice and then life lost the bloodshed, any advancement in any field has caused the one who leads us into that new field of knowledge and advancement suffering or a great deal of suffering. The Honorable Elijah Mama said, blessed is he who forges the way for others. There's a scripture that talks about the one whom God assigns the task of bringing in a world that is totally new. This is this would mean he brings in a world, a new knowledge, a new knowledge that challenges the scholarship of his day. So the scripture teaches no vestige was more marred than his. This is because what he's doing is like cutting a path through a jungle, the branches of the trees that you have to cut down hit your face and scar your face. But as you cut that branch down, the ones coming behind you feel little or no pain because you have felt it for them. So it says, by his stripes we are healed. In the newness of the knowledge that he brings and his intense love for the world that he sees in his mind, which is not yet in reality. This in what causes this is what causes him to endure what he endures of the ignorance of his contemporaries. So when his truth is established, he may or may not be present. 
but he will be vindicated by history. I'm closing now. I can imagine the prophets of God who saw beyond the range of vision of their contemporaries, who saw things yet to come, such gifted persons in certain areas possess, possess gifts far beyond the gifts of the contemporaries, were subject to uh, thoughts that he is sick or crazy. So he is rejected of men and despised and evil spoken of and ill thought of because he sees that what others are unable to see. So there was no prophet that escaped the judgmental nature of his contemporaries. I can imagine how lesser ones such as Nostradamus suffered. I can imagine how Galileo how Newton and Boyle and in visionaries in every field suffered. Look at the doctors who have discovered in the DNA that which would allow them to clone a human being. Hey, beautiful, suffered. you've got a text message. Brother Deborah, in representing the teachings, he was obviously, he suffered, even though he may not have been the articulate one among us. When he came to you with a message from Minister Farrakhan, maybe kind of, he used a little cuss word here, man. Uh, he, he used the N word a little here and there, you know. He was a little spicy here and there, but his ultimate aim was to get you to live a better life, huh? And as we have witnesses that have come up, and have told us of Brother Deborah's background, but when he found his leader and teacher, even though he may not have expressed it like his leader and teacher, we really understood where he was coming from. Yeah. Right. See? So even though he may not be here to see the end of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Hey, Muhammad beautiful. You've got a text message. Uh, he will be vindicated. His family watched, brothers and sisters, even though sometimes you may have thought, well, that, that, that Deborah's crazy. Huh? I don't believe in all that what he's saying, but believe you and me. But as the days go by, everything that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan has taught and is teaching is coming to pass. And so Brother Deborah will be vindicated like his leader and teacher. Now, brothers and sisters, as a student minister, of course, he got on my nerves. <laughs> and, uh, I remember one time, Sister uh, Councilwoman, you remember, uh, Sister called me, and uh, she's like, Brother Robert, Brother Deborah. Uh, he, any member of one of you, any member of your mom's house, I was like, yes, ma'am. Well, he called me and he, he get on my nerves. I was like, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Yeah, he's one of the brothers in your mom's. I'd go to Denver and Sister Harley, I mean, you know, we would go back and forth because Brother Denver uh, felt as though if we did not do it when he wanted it done, then we were shucking and jiving, you know? And that was Brother Deborah. You know, I mean, he called me. He, so, so when Sister Harley would call me, I would tell Brother Deborah, Brother Deborah would get back. And when Sister Harley and he'd be like, yeah, Brother Robert, we all right. <laughs> she all right. I, I mean, I mean, we got to work. We got to work. So I remember one time, hey, I, I don't know whether Brother McHale is here or not, <laughs> Captain McHale, Captain of the Mars. But he had brought me up on charges and stuff like that. And I had to go between. It was the sister captain. It was the brother captain and the secretary. And he had me, you know what I mean? Like, look, well, brother Robert ain't right. He, you know, he needed to be acting like he got some sense. And I did, yes, sir, brother Deborah, you're right. You know? But the brother loved what he loved. And that was... Hey, beautiful. You've got...
got a text message. And he loved his community. He loved the people that he served and he loved his family. So as we wind down, Brother Dembro, uh, in fact, my Brother Jamil, uh, he was not able to make it uh, this evening. He told me he wanted me to let you all know. Uh, the doctors told him to stay uh, in the home for about three days. So oh. he, he told me just to let you all know uh, that he's with you, he loves you, and whatnot. Yes. So <clears throat> as we wind this down, uh, uh, Brother Debro has returned to Allah, and we thank Allah for the work that he put in to help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I close with these words from the minister. The Holy Quran refers to death as the evil accident of time. We know that there is no evil in God, but he is the author of life and the ultimate cause of death. But he called it. I don't care, brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes we aid ourselves along uh, to our ultimate demise. But Allah, he is the author of life and he causes death. And we could not have uh, given him another second more than Almighty God Allah desired. That goes for each and every one of us. The minister taught us that, he said, death is not for the dead. Death is for the living. Funerals are for the living. Why? Because it gives us the opportunity to get it right if we are off on the wrong path. Maybe the deceased and what they have, the life that they have lived may cause us to come back on the path of Almighty God, Allah. So the death is for the living to get it right. So the minister goes on to say, that Allah, God, is the ultimate cause of death, but he called it, the God called it, the evil accident of time. Because as long as we come to life, there is a time that we all must leave this world and return to Allah. It's called an evil accident because when we hear about the loss of a loved one. It's the loss of a friend. It's the loss of a brother. It's the loss of a sister. It's the loss of a husband. The loss of a wife. The loss of a teacher that taught us so much. The pain that we feel is a pain that causes tears to well up in our eyes or tears to flow from our eyes because of the impact of this brother in our lives. And our loved ones on our lives and all of us that celebrate him know that our day is coming. Sooner or later, when we will return to Allah, some will return in shame. Some will return in shame, and none of us want to do that, to return to our Lord in shame. That's why funerals are for the living, so that we can get it right. 